Hi folks and thanks for tuning in. So it's been quite a while since the last update that I did. Uh, we're talking a good six months ago now, I think. Uh, winter was the last one and there wasn't much going on there to be honest. Height of summer now though, uh, July 2022 here in the UK. So I thought it's high time to give you an update on the pond here. So if you've been following my pond series, you can probably see a few of the changes already. Uh, first and foremost, is the bog filter that I've added over recent months. You can see sitting on the back wall of the pond there. I still want to add a coping around the top, sort of grey uh, timber to match the rest of the pond. The cladding around the sides is 90% done. I've not done the bit on the uh, left hand edge just yet. I think I'll probably replace the splash guard at the front with, uh, with a nice new piece of Perspex sheet. What I'll do is uh, I'll throw in a few still images of uh, how I built the bog filter. Basically, I started off with uh, making rectangular box type structure. And for that, I used um, 12 millimeter hardwood plywood. And I screwed that together in, in many places. The, uh, it's got a partition in it as well, you might notice. I actually used a piece of uh, kiln dried pine for that because basically what I built this for is to have uh, seven Finifil aquatic plant baskets in the back. So the next phase was to waterproof the, the bog filter and for this I used a, a pond paint uh, and it's a, a two part epoxy based pond paint by Antel. I got two one litre packs. The first pack I got in a, a lightish grey colour and the, the next pack I got in a black colour. So the first coat was a, a full pack and that covered it really well. And it also covered the outside of it which was uh, quite useful. Before I actually filled it I then used, uh, I put a bead of silicon around all of the uh, inner joints. The base that I'd made was quite level, but I decided to put several sheets of um, rubberized uh, garage flooring to absorb any uh, imperfections. Um, I also incorporated uh, an overflow in the front section. Uh, so basically the blade can be bypassed by just um, rotating that overflow pipe so it's submerged. So basically the water rises to the level of the overflow and then goes out of the overflow in, into the pond uh, if it's down at that level. But then I can rotate it and raise it up so that the water rises and goes over the blade before it gets to the overflow. Uh, so I, I incorporated that in the design stage because over winter um, I think that probably I will run it via the overflow uh, pretty much all the time. So I'll take you through the filtration system that I've now got on the pond, which is pretty much complete, certainly from a sort of construction point of view. Um, so water basically exits the pond via the aerated bottom drain. The pipe that goes underneath the pond joins to the easy pod and the water level equalises between the pond and the easy pod, so they're at the same water level. Um, so after the easy pod, I've then built myself a DIY moving bed filter. So once it's gone through the pump, which is a Evolution Aqua 10K pump, it goes up into a TMC Ultima 30 watt UV. Once the water leaves the UV unit, it travels down a pipe. This just uh, expelled through uh, an in-wall return uh, down at the, the far right side end of the pond. And it now has um, um, a branch line that goes up into the back of the bog filter. 
and uh, enters the bog filter low down. Um, on the bog filter line I've incorporated another ball valve and in between them that enables me to adjust the flow uh, between either the bog filter or the underwater through the wall jet. So another major change is that I've actually got koi carp in the pond. I bought those early in the year, we're talking about around about April time, uh, from a local shop Finest Aquatics in Widnes. So I got five Japanese koi, I believe they're from Ogata Koi Farm. So I've got a Ginrin Hiyotsuri, as you can see here. Uh, I've got a Shiro Utsuri. I've got a Ginrin Showa, a Yamabuki Ogon, and a Goshki. So I bought these fish as seven to eight inch size tozai. Yeah, and they seem to be doing really well. Certainly grown noticeably already. I'm gonna try and throw in a before and after shot here. So that's over the space of what, around three months. And I've also still got two tench in the system from last year. So perhaps the final development is that I've added uh, an auto feeder and that feed, auto feeder that I'm using is a Fishmate P7000 and that is set to come on twice a day generally around about nine in the morning and again at around six in the evening. Uh, the range of foods that I'm using is the NT Labs Medikoi range and I find the koi take to those straight away and there's never any waste but I don't have that problem at all with the NT Lab stuff and I'm feeding a mixture of probiotic growth and health all mixed together in the feeder and uh, I also throw in some silkworm occasionally uh, and yeah they seem to be doing really well from it fish certainly seem to be in good condition so I think I've covered everything there folks uh, for this update uh, if you've got any questions or observations then uh, feel free to comment below uh, and I'll try my best to answer anyone who does so if you're interested don't forget to hit the old subscribe button there and uh, you'll get notified of uh, the next update that I do. Thanks a lot, folks. See you later.